بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم This is our final session about fiqh, introduction to fiqh and as you remember we discussed in the second part of last session about ijtihad and taqlid we clarified the meaning of ijtihad and we said we have two types of ijtihad ijtihad mutlaq ijtihad mutajazzi and then we said taqlid means to do your action in compliance with the fatwa of a mujtahid then we mentioned reasons for taqlid we said it is first of all a rational practice that people do in different fields of life also we said that there are many hadith that talk about this there are also some verses of the Quran that ask people to refer to those who know or ask people that they should go and learn and then teach their own people like ayatul nafr lawla nafr min kull firqatin minhum ta'ifah liyatafaqahu fi din wa liyundhiru qawmahum idha raja'u ilayhim why if all people cannot travel to learn why from every group some don't travel and learn and then go back to their people and warn them question if these people are going to learn and then people don't follow them what's the benefit yes so we talked about different reasons for taqlid and we said this actually didn't start in the time of occultation or ghaiba. it was happening in the time of imams even imam sadiq salam, for example said to aban ibn taghlib i like to have more people like you among my shia who sit in masjid and give fatwa imam asked him to sit in majlis masjid in medina and give fatwa and said i like to have more people like you okay now the next question is does marja or marja' if you want to say it more correctly does marja' need to be the most knowledgeable or it's just enough to be knowledgeable okay does marja' have to be a'lam means the most knowledgeable or it's just enough that he is a mujtahid and is mutlaq mujtahid mutlaq but not the most knowledgeable but no one has said you can do taqlid of someone who is not mujtahid. Okay, and please be very careful. If people call someone ayatollah, this is not hujjah. On the day of judgment, you cannot say, everyone was saying ayatollah, so ayatollah. This is not hujjah. Actually, some people, maybe their father has called them ayatollah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is the name in their passport, or you know, there's Ayatollah. So Ayatollah is not a hujja. We need a mujtahid, and like any other discipline, you must have recognition from the society of that field. Society of mujtahideen should say he is a mujtahid. Yeah? Who says someone is doctor? Who says someone is lawyer? Must be that society. Not lay people in that field. Yeah? So if, for example, 100 lawyers say, 100 doctors say, 100 businessmen say, this person is Ayatollah, is it hoja for you? It's not hoja for you. If some Talabah say, this is Ayatollah, is it hoja for you? 
If someone has a hoja, is it hoja for you that he is mushtahid? No. These are not hoja. The only hoja is that you go home, you go to Najaf, you go to Mashhad, you ask top ulama. Aga, who is today mujtahid who can give fatwa? Not even ask any alim. Top ulama in every major hoja, ask them. Who are people that today, in this age, with peace of mind, we can do taqlid of them? It's very rational. Don't take any risk. OK. So certainly has to be mujtahid mutlaq. And this must be verified by society or circle of mujtahidin, top scholars. Does Marja need also to be most knowledgeable or not? Some ulama say it doesn't need to be most knowledgeable. Why? Because they say when we refer to experts, we don't necessarily try to go to the most knowledgeable expert. For example, if you want an engineer, if you want a doctor, even an architect in London, do you go to the most knowledgeable person and most experienced person in that field or no? They say it's not necessary. We can go to someone who has the enough and adequate credentials. We don't need to go to the best. And therefore, they say, because the main reason, according to them, for ijtihad and taqlid, or you can say for taqlid, is siriya uqala, the conduct of uqala. And uqala, maybe they don't require uh, to go to a'la. Also, they say, ahlul bayt salam. When they said, for example, you can go to Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman or Aban ibn Taglab or Zakaria ibn Adam, this was the time that they themselves were there. For sure, their knowledge was not like Imams. But Imams didn't say, don't ask them, ask me, because I am more knowledgeable. Or even they didn't say, is there anyone more knowledgeable than that person or not? Okay, so some people argue in this way. They say, therefore, we don't need to find the most knowledgeable. But there are ulama who say that, no, it must be most knowledgeable. Most of actually our ulama say it has to be most knowledgeable. Why? Because when something is of utmost importance, Suppose there is a disease, God forbids, that it's very difficult to diagnose. Or it's diagnosed, but the treatment is very difficult. And doctors have different opinions. What do you do? Do you go to any doctor? Or you try to find the best doctor, the most knowledgeable and experienced doctor? You know, if you don't know there is difference of opinion, it's OK. But if you know something is that sensitive that doctors don't agree, they have different opinions, then you have to go to the best one. So do we know that there are different opinions among Maraji, or we don't know? We know that there are different fatwas. So we cannot you know, say, no, I didn't know. I thought they are all saying the same thing. No. When they have different opinions, or as we say in Usul al there is ilm ijmali, means we know that some issues, they differ. Not 100%, not even maybe 50%, maybe 20%, maybe 10%. But we know that they differ in some of the fatwas. So. What should I do to be on the safe side? I try to find the most knowledgeable person. If I follow the most knowledgeable person, am I taking any risk? Is anyone stopping me and saying, no, 
You must not follow the most knowledgeable. There is a problem here. No. But if you, I follow the one who is that most knowledgeable, this is risky. Okay? Plus, in the time of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Ijtihad was not like today. Aban ibn Taghlib was not doing Ijtihad like Maraj today. It was very simple. They just needed to hear a hadith from Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam which hadith is authentic, which not, and quickly apply it to the case. They had very simple form of Ijtihad. And therefore, there was no need to go to Imam alayhi salam. You could ask them. And for sure, if someone was not sure what Imam Sadiq thinks, he would not give any fatwa and said, let me ask Imam alayhi salam. But nowadays, ijtihad is very complicated. It's not just narrating hadith. So at that time, Ahlul Bayt didn't ask people to go to A'lam, the most knowledgeable, because Ijtihad was very simple. Now, Ijtihad is very, very complicated. Okay? Like, for example, even today, maybe for GP, you don't need to go to the most knowledgeable GP. But when it comes to a specialist, maybe you go to the best. If You know, understand? The third, actually, we have hadith that says you have to go to A'la. You cannot say you don't need to go to A'la. Let me refer to some of the hadith that says in our learning of religion and also leadership, we need to go to A'la. For example, there is a famous hadith. We call it Maghbuliya Umar ibn Hanzali. Umar ibn Hanzali asked Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, what should we do when we receive conflicting, for example, opinions? And Imam alayhi salam gives him answer and finally reaches this point. That two parties, they have differences and each of them asks, you know, an alim, but these alims differ. Imam said, Al Hukmu Ma Hakama Behi Aadaluhuma Wa Afkahuhuma Wa Astakuhuma Fil Hadith Wa Aurauhuma Wala Yul Tafatu Ilama Yahkumu Behil Akhar. Al Huk, the judgment, the verdict is the verdict of the one among these two is more just more knowledgeable, more truthful in hadith. And the judgment of the other person is not followed. So when two faqih, two alim differ in their judgment, we should go to the one who is more knowledgeable and more pious. This is one case. Amir al Mu'manin, in his instruction for Malik Ashtar when he appointed him as governor of Egypt, when he talks about conditions of judge, who can be judge? Imam said, Choose for judging among people the best of your subjects in your heart, in yourself. You know, it means who is the best? Choose them as judge. Not the second best, not any good person, the best. When we have the best, we shouldn't go for the second best. Rasul Akram, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَنْ دَعَ النَّاسَ إِلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ وَفِيهِمْ مَنْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ مِنْهِ لَمْ يَنْظُرِ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ If someone calls people towards himself and says, follow me, either in political leadership, community leadership, 
Marja'iyya, he calls people towards himself, while there is someone who is more knowledgeable than him. Allah doesn't look at him on the day of judgment. In another hadith, Rasulullah said, Man taqaddama ala qawmin min al-Muslimin wa huwa yara anna fihim man huwa afdalu min If someone precedes other and puts himself in a leadership position while he knows there is someone better than him. فَقَدْ خَانَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالْمُسْلَمِينَ He has betrayed Allah and the Messenger and Muslims. So, if someone is better than you, how can then you put yourself in the position of marja'iyya? It's very difficult to say, no, it doesn't matter. Imam Jawad alayhi salam said to his uncle who was giving fatwa, Ya Am, innahu azimun inda Allah an taqifa ghadan bayna yaday fa yagulu laka lima tufti ibadi bima lam ta'lam wa fil ummati man huwa a'lamu minka. This would be great, means something that you cannot tolerate. That on the day of judgment, you stand before Allah and Allah says, Why did you give fatwa to my servants while there was in Ummah someone more knowledgeable than you? Imam Hassan alayhi salam in response to Muawiyah, when Muawiyah made a big khutbah and claimed, you know, wrong things, Imam Hassan alayhi salam referred to a hadith from the Prophet. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi ma wallat ummatun amraha rajulan وَفِيهِمْ مَنْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ مِنْهِ إِلَّا لَمْ يَزَلْ أَمْرُهُمْ يَذْهَبُ السِّفَالًا حَتَّى يَرْجِعُوا إِلَى مَا تَرَكُوا No nation have given wilaya, have given their leadership to a person while there is a person more knowledgeable. Unless their affairs goes always from bad to worse, Unless they return and make the one who was more knowledgeable their leader. فَقَدْ تَرَكَتْ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلَ هَارُونَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ خَلِيفَةُ مُوسَى فِيهِمْ When Musa went to receive tablets, Harun was Khalifa. Yeah. As قَالَ مُوسَى لَخِي هَارُونُ خُلُفْنِ فِي قَوْمِ They didn't listen to him. What happened? Then they started worshipping Kaf. وَقَدْ تَرَكَتْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ أَبِي وَبَايَعُوا غَيْرَهِ Imam Hassan says, Unfortunately, this ummah left my father, Imam Ali, and then they went to someone else, and now the situation is that now Muawiyah is the situation. Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam says, إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِالْأَنْبِيَاءَ أَعْلَمُهُمْ بِمَا جَاءُوا بِهِ The people who have more right to speak on behalf of prophets are those who have more knowledge about what the prophets have brought. الْعُلَمَاءُ وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ But which alim has more inheritance? The one who has more knowledge. In Nahjulullah, again, Imam Ali says, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna ayyuhan nas, inna ahaqqan nas bihaza al-amr, aghwahum alayh wa a'lamuhum bi amrillah. The one who has more right for this, means for leadership, is the one who is more capable and more knowledgeable. 
he knows the command of Allah better and is more capable. Imam Baghir alayhi salam said, Wallahi ahabbu ashabi ilayya. By Allah, the most lovable companions of me are awra'uhum wa afqahuhum wa akhtamuhum li hadithina. The one who is more pious, most pious, most knowledgeable, and most secretive means can seek, keep secrets. You remember when we had followership, we said one of the qualities of good follower is to keep things confidential, to hide our hadith, which are not supposed to be public. Some hadith are for public, some hadith are internal. Okay, there we have, I think, enough to say that marja'iyya, as a person who has a scholarly position, but also a person that has leadership position, because no one can think that Marja is just a scholar. Marja is also a leader. And how can we such hadith, we say, we go for someone who is not the most knowledgeable? It doesn't look you know, right. Now, what is the meaning of A'lam? This is a very good discussion. Of course, scholars have discussed this issue. And I mentioned just some of the opinions of scholars so that you have some idea. What is A'lamiyya? Because people may think A'lamiyya means the one who has bigger imamah. If you have bigger imamah, <laughs> then he's, uh, or the one who has uh, more people walk for example, someone walks, 100 people walk with him. Oh, mashallah, this must be very alam because he has 100 <laughs> students. Or the one who gives more shahriya to the student. No, these are not signs of alamiya. Even the sign of alamiya is not that he has more books. Someone maybe has no books. Maybe someone has hundreds of books. It's not sign of alamiya. What is the sign of alamiya? What do we mean by alamiya? Shaykh al-Ansari says in Matarih al-Anwar, Al-A'lamu man kana aghwa malakatan wa ashaddu wa ashadda istinbatan bihasab al-qawaid al-muqarrara. Ijtihad is a malaka. What does it mean? Means is an ability which has become a permanent quality for someone. That whenever you raise to him a question, he has the ability to go to the sources and come back with answer. It's malakatul ijtihad. Okay? It's malaka is very important. Like, for example, driving, swimming. All should become like part of your nature. If you are driving, but you have to 100% focus and still you forget certain things, <laughs> you know, at the beginning, you are 100% focusing and still you forget. You have not developed malaka for driving. But the one who has, means can easily make all the things properly, proper decision, and still maybe can also talk. So, Sheikh Ansari says, Alam is the one who has a stronger malakatul ijtihad. So two people who are mujtahid, but the one who has a stronger quality of forming decisive opinions about rulings. According to the rules, maybe someone claims very easily, you know, there are people that you ask them questions, right away they give you answer. Don't be deceived. 
any person who just gives you answer without a study, you have to doubt. Mujtahid has to go back a study unless he has already done his own research. But people, you know, sometimes I see they make such a, you know, childish arguments and say, based on this, this is my view. This is childish. You must go and check all the sources, opinions of other maraji, other fuqaha in the course of history and see is there anything to affect this issue or not. You know, when a patient comes to you as a doctor, you cannot just quickly decide. You have to see, is this maybe right now a new disease? Maybe this is a germ? Maybe other doctors, you know, have had these cases, what they have found. Maybe this medicine doesn't work for this. You cannot quickly, every person comes, you know, just take the pen and, you know, write something. It's... So, according to the rules of ijtihad, and we mean by having a stronger malakatul ijtihad, we mean man ajada fi fahmil akhbar, the one who can understand hadith better, mutabakatan wal tizaman. Because, you know, we have three types of meaning. Al-ma'na al-mutabiqi, al-ma'na al-tazmini, al-ma'na tazammuni, al-ma'na al-iltazami. Means direct and indirect meaning. Implicit and explicit meaning of hadith. Sometimes hadith says something, but it implies another thing. Who can understand hadith better? Isharatan wa talwihan. Sometimes can be just hint. They should get these hints. Wa fi fahm anwa'id ta'aruz. He must know that there are different types of conflicts that can happen among hadith. You cannot just find one hadith, even if it is authentic, and give fatwa. Maybe there is a conflicting hadith. And then, how to put them together, jam'. How you can put these hadith together? You know, we have ta'adul wa taraji, which is helping us how to decide. وَفِي الْجَمْعِ بَيْنَهُمَا بِإِعْمَالِ الْقَوَاعِدِ الْمُقَرَّرَةِ لِذَلِكِ You must know how to bring them together according to the rules that help us to understand what ORF does. You know, when ORF hears two different things from a speaker, if they have jam'a orfi, we should go by jam'a orfi. These are, of course, technical discussions. Then he says, Amma Akthar al Istanbat. Sorry, Akthar al Istanbat. Waziyadat al Istikhraj. La mat It doesn't need to be a person who has, for example, done ijtihad of 10,000 mas'ala. We say, okay, he has done 10,000 mas'ala. Another person has done 1,000 mas'ala. So this is more knowledgeable. No, it's not. A matter of quantity. Many of our maraja, maybe actually their fat was when they were 50 years old or 70 years old didn't differ. Yeah? Because when you develop the skill and you work for a few years, after that your idea may not necessarily change. Even if you are working more and your new masail are coming, it's not that their knowledge increases. Sayyid Abu Hassan al Isfahani, rahmatullah alayh, he says, Wal yu'lam anna al milaka fil a'lamiya huwa al aqdariya fi fahm al akhbar wa stinbat al ahkam minha wa kawnihi ajwada fahman lil akhbar. He says, the criterion for a'lamiya is to be more capable in understanding hadith and drawing rulings out of the hadith and having more appropriate understanding of hadith. You know, you have to train your mind 
so that you understand the hadith in the way that people of that time understood hadith. I cannot understand with 21st century uh, mentality the hadith. <laughs> Maybe the terms today have taken another meaning. An alim must be so familiar with the hadith of Ahlul Bayt that can understand what Imam Sadiq meant when he said this. What was understandable at that time? Like any field today. If today, for example, people interpret, a, for example, a Greek text, which was written 2,000 years ago, how they interpret it according to the modern Greek? Or they try to understand Greek, which was spoken 2,000 years ago. Okay? So, a mujtahid must know what those hadith meant at that time. Agha Ziauddin al-Iraqi, one of the students of Akhund Khurasani, one of the teachers of Ayatollah Khui, he says, Al-Muradu min al-A'lam man kana ahsan astinbatan min ghayre. The one who can do better astinbat. Astinbat means to infer, to make conclusion about the ruling based on the sources. لكونه أغوى نظرا في تنقيه قواعد المسألة because he is more capable in determining what rules apply here because we have many rules in fiqh which rules apply here you remember we had قواعد فقية what references are here What Ahlul Bayt meant by these things. So, my, I think, uh, conclusion uh, is that it's very risky if someone today refers to someone who is not A'lam. Even if some mujtahids had the idea that is not needed, you cannot follow them because you are taking risk. <coughs> yes, there is maybe one way. If you find the most knowledgeable mujtahid today and he says you don't need to follow A'la, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah, if you find the most knowledgeable mujtahid and he says you can refer to someone who is mujtahid even if he's not A'la, that's then a kind of Exemption. Otherwise, we cannot take risk. We have to find out who is the most knowledgeable. How we find it out? If you are not yourself close to the level of ijtihad, you cannot find out. You should ask people who are mujtahid or at least close to the level of ijtihad. And you should also have a good uh, inquiry. Because some people know all ulama, some people only know one alim. This is why I believe what we need to do is we should have, I hope inshallah this can happen in future, in every country, if not continent, in every country we should form a council of ulama who live in that country, or maybe some of them live in that country, some don't live in that country. They live in the Hosas. We select a group of six, seven, eight, nine, ten scholars and say, we are not able to do this, you know, research. You are alim. But we as a community request you to do proper investigation even when we don't need, we have Alhamdulillah Marja, but you should keep checking Hosas. Who are the Maraja which are emerging? So that if God forbids, if God forbids, we lose our Marja. 
we already have the system in its place that tells us in 24 hours, 48 hours, this is the most knowledgeable person, and we all follow. Instead of every person makes a decision on his own or her own, and they don't know, and in this way, we can also have a unity in the community. Inshallah, maybe in future, we can go for such systems that at the same time that we go for alamiya and at the same time that every person is responsible. You cannot put responsibility on someone else. But you can use rational methods that you can say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, we had this group of experts and they gave me confidence. I think this is actually a better answer to Allah than you just, you know, make a few phone calls or read a few websites. How much time do we have? No time? Okay. There are other issues, of course, about marja. One is also that the marja should be high, should be alive. Why? Because Marja is not just narrator of hadith. A narrator of hadith like Shaykh Kulaini, rahmatullah. If you know something is said by Shaykh Kulaini and the coffee, you can trust. But Marja is the one that has to help us with life scenarios, day to day affairs, issues that emerge. So we cannot do taqlid of a dead person? Yes. If you have been already doing taqlid, then hear many maraja allow to stay. This means maximum would be one generation. Yeah? So I followed one marja, and I continue after his demise. Even sometimes you must continue if the living marja says that you have to follow the previous one if he was more knowledgeable. You know, there are technical issues here. But... I cannot start taglid with a dead person. I can continue my taglid when someone passes away, but I cannot do taglid on mayyad ibtida'an. I say, I want to do taglid of Sheikh Ansari today. <laughs> no. With all the respect for Sheikh Ansari, we cannot do that. So, if you follow a marja and God forbid the marja passes away, you find out who is the most knowledgeable marja and ask him, what should I do? Should I stay with him? Should I shift to you? Or I have choice? Sometimes they may say, you have choice. Sometimes they may say, if that person was more knowledgeable, you must stay. Or if the new one is more knowledgeable, you have to shift. So anything you do is with the permission of the living qualified marja. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give long life to our marja and give them success, give them tawfiq. And may Allah inshallah uh, help our hosas to train lots of great scholars so that inshallah in future we would have always godly scholars who can lead us in every areas of life especially when it comes to marja'iyah alhamdulillah rabbil alam Thank you very much, Sheikhna. Uh, alhamdulillah, that brings us to the end of our seventh semester now of Hujat Academy. Um, on behalf of all of us, we're very indebted to Sheikh uh, for the time that you've put into Hujat Academy, for the efforts that you put in. Um, and on behalf of the team, we thank everybody for their attendance. Um, inshallah, it's going to keep getting stronger and stronger. And we pray that Sheikh can come back for an eighth semester, ninth semester, tenth semester, inshallah, until. Uh, the future decides when is a good time. Um, if we can thank Sheikh for his time, for his efforts with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma <laughs> salam. Inshallah, tomorrow I'm going to Canada for courses in Montreal, Ottawa. So I need your du'as. Like always, uh, I rely on your du'as. So please pray, inshallah. We can have good programs. And just a quick sneak peek into the next semester. It hasn't been finalized, but we are looking into subjects, into modules. There has been feedback, um, which we are taking on board as well. 
one topic we are enthusiastic to start on is uh, introduction to Sahifa Sajjadiyya. Inshallah, we're hoping that can take place as one of the classes next semester. We're looking into a few others like Irfan, like Logic. Um, it's still being finalized. But inshallah, keep, uh, keep updated with the emails, with the messages coming out. Inshallah, that and if they have suggestions? Yes, if you have suggestions, you please email Hujat Academy. And we'd be more than happy and to take that And we are waiting for 2020 calendar, yeah, after? Yes. For availability of the dates. Do try and keep Tuesday evenings free. Inshallah, we'll try to stick with that if it's possible. 2020 has more Tuesdays, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Someone went to buy calendar, so please give me something which has more holidays. <laughs> no time. Once again, thank you very much, Shikna, for You're your time, and we end with following you in dua. Yes, Allahumma kulli waliyyaka al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan, salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا ومن علينا ورضاه وهب لنا رأفته ورحمته ودعاءه وخيره اللهم اجعل صلاتنا به مقبولة ودعاءنا به مستجابة وحوائجنا به مقضية وحمومنا به مكفية اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا بحق محمد وآل محمد Thank you very much for your good questions, for participation, for your duas. May Allah bless you, inshallah.